Hi, and welcome to another Gluon Cloud Link screencast. Today, we'll explain with a very simple use case how to extend an existing web application with a mobile application component using Gluon Cloud Link, Spring Framework, and Spring Boot. Typically, mobile apps interact directly with backend and enterprise systems. A system administrator can set data using a web application that will be synchronized to the different mobile application clients, but this tends to be cumbersome. A better approach is using the cloud and a mobile backend as a service like Gluon Cloud Link. With the help of the Gluon dashboard and using the proper credentials, the backend application will send the data to Cloud Link, and this will take care of syncing the client apps. In this screencast, we will create a Java mobile application to show a simple message. We will use the Gluon dashboard to get the credentials for both client and server apps, and we'll explain how to use it to configure the enterprise endpoints. We'll adapt a Spring backend application to connect to Gluon Cloud Link. This tutorial is based on the Spring Message of the Day sample that you can find as for other samples at gloomhq.com slash support slash samples. Its code is available at the Gluon GitHub repo and its documented tutorial is available at the Gluon docs. To create this sample, you require the Gluon plugin for your IDE and a valid subscription to Gluon Cloud Link. Check other screencasts on how to get one if you don't have it already. For starters, we have an extremely simple Spring application. Using the Spring Boot plugin for Gradle, we have our Spring application class and a front handler to manage REST requests from a web application, with a GET method to retrieve the current value of a given string and a POST one to update its value. The web app has a simple form that calls those methods. Let's run boot run and open the web app. If we send a message, for now, we'll just display an error message. Now, as a client app, we'll create a Java mobile application. With the use of the Gluon plugin for your IDE, we can create a project with a pair of default views. Let's select New, Gluon, Gluon Mobile, and the Glisten Afterburner project template. Click Next. Let's name it Gluon Client, set the package name, and click Next. We will set the main primary view. We click Finish. And now a full project is created with two default views. If we click Run, we can see what we have so far. This will be the main view, and this will be the secondary view. Now that we have our default project ready and running, we'll start modifying the initial view. We'll edit the default FXML view. We open main FXML with SimBuilder 8.3.0. Notice that the scene builder includes a Gluon mobile panel with the controls that you can use to easily define your views. We'll remove the default content and we add just a label with an icon. Back to the views package, we modify the presenter to include this label and set an initial text. And we also add some styling to the main view. We run again the app to check the changes we have just done. The next step is adding a service package and a service class to retrieve the remote messages. In order to connect the client app to Cloud Link, valid credentials are required. So we have to access the Gluon dashboard in our browser. We'll sign in with our credentials and we'll select from the list of options on the left the last link, Credentials. Under the Client tab, we will find a pair of key and secret tokens. While you can copy them, a better option is downloading the config file and storing it in your project under Source Main Resources. To make use of the required API, we'll need to add the Charm Cloud Link client dependency to the build gradle file. Once we have the correct version, we'll save and reload the project. Back to the service class, first we will create a data client to access Cloud Link using Operation Mode Cloud First. We'll add an object identifier, the same we were using in the web application, and now we'll ask the data client to create an object data reader with this identifier and a flag to update the local object whenever it changes in the cloud. The object will be retrieved and converted into a Gluon observable object. We can listen to the initialized property, and when this property is true, we can check the initial value. If the object doesn't exist yet, we'll set a default message. With our service completely defined, we can inject it in the main presenter. By using injection, we'll have an instance of the service that we'll use to retrieve the observable object, and we can bind it to the label text property. 
running the app now, will show the default message as the object hasn't been created yet. But we can see as well on the console that we have connection with Gluon Cloud Link. Time to define the service that connects to Gluon Cloud Link at the backend application. First, we'll add the service package and the Gluon service class. This will be annotated with add service. It will contain two public methods, get message and update message, that for now will return a JSON object with an empty payload. We can inject the service in our front handler and call its methods from the get and post requests. Now in the service, to use the REST controller to request or update data that is located in Gluon Cloud Link, we'll add the enterprise endpoint that, according to the documentation, is set to cloud.gluonhq.com slash tree slash data slash enterprise. Every request done from the backend has to be authenticated. For that, we'll use a server key to use in an HTTP authorization header. From the Gluon dashboard, we can navigate to the credentials link, the server tab, and look for this key. We'll add a private method to include by default this header. Now we can add the REST request. For the first method, we'll use the endpoint and the object identifier to retrieve its value. We make sure that we are using the same as we have in the client. We can already return the response, a JSON format string with an identifier and a payload. In case there is no identifier, we can add a new request to create the object in Gluon Cloud Link. As we can see in the documentation, we'll include add in the endpoint and a payload with B as a key and an empty value. For the update method, we'll add update to the endpoint and the payload will contain the new value. Time to test the web application. Let's run boot run again, navigate to localhost, and now type a message. We'll get a confirmation that the message was updated. In fact, we can verify it by accessing the Gluon dashboard. Go to the data management link, objects tab, and we see our identifier. Tapping on it, we see that the current value matches what we sent from the web application. And we also can run the client app and see that this message is set as well. And we can update the message again from the web application, and it will be sent to Gluon Cloud Link. And from there, all the clients listening will have a change event and will refresh the value automatically. Time to deploy the app on your mobile device. Select either Task Android Android Install to install on Android device or Task Launch Launch iOS device to run on iPhone or iPad. In this case, we'll use an iPad, so we select Launch Launch iOS device. In less than a minute, the app is deployed. We open the app and we can see that we have the latest message of the day that we sent from the web application. In this screencast, we have created a web application with Spring Boot that, using the enterprise endpoints, can retrieve and update a single object in Gluon Cloud Link. We have also created a client project that can be deployed on desktop, Android, and iOS to retrieve the value of a single object from Gluon Cloud Link. When the value is modified from the web application, the client applications are updated instantly. This is all for now. Stay tuned for more screencasts where we will highlight more features of Gluon Cloud Link. In the meantime, visit our YouTube media channel or go to our website to learn more. Thanks for watching.